I believe that there's a unique opportunity with the expired and cancels. You know, we saw from 2021, some of the lowest inventory ever. Then we mm -hmm. saw the interest rates increase. There was a little spike in, in inventory. But what I'm telling everybody right now, three, this is an amazing opportunity for yeah. us to approach the expired and cancels and to build a nice pipeline of listings for 2024. There's no one better for me to have on a podcast today <laughs> to talk about crushing expireds for this unique opportunity than Mr. Paul Campanero. Let's start at the top of the framework, Paul. Let's talk a little bit about what do you see is the problem with the agent's mindset regarding the expired cancel prospecting or lead generation. Yeah, for sure. I think because things have been so slim in regards to expired withdrawn opportunities in the past, you know, there is a huge opportunity. To, it's the first today. And I just got off the phones actually just a minute ago. Nice. And uh, there was 200 plus expired withdrawals today. So huge right. opportunity. Absolutely. I think it's something that can't be missed in regards to putting into your game plan for finding motivated sellers. So as far as uh, mindset, coaching for a long time, I've, I've masterminded with agents who do uh, a lot of, of this type of prospecting. And uh, initially, I think uh, the biggest hurdle to overcome for uh, newer agents or agents newer to prospecting expired withdrawals is the mindset of that the people who you're talking to don't really want to talk to you, mm, yeah, right? Exactly. That that uh, the scarcity mindset, because look, property yeah. comes off the market, you expected to sell your property, it didn't sell, and now you're pissed off. Yeah. Right. And and now to compound that, to heighten that emotion, now all of a sudden you got all these phone calls happening, right? And of course, all of us who were in that situation would experience uh, anger, frustration, you know, all those things that people are experiencing when agents are calling expired withdrawals. So now look, what I tell people when I'm coaching them for expired withdrawals is remember who you are. You're the first responder. Mm, and this nice. is an emergency right. because uh, they expected to sell. It didn't sell. And so when you walk into these conversations, your mindset of, of knowing that like with emergency responders, right, they come onto the scene and there's some chaos, you know, there's a fire, there's people screaming, there's <laughs> all this, all this chaos happening. Yes. And so you, first responders can't show up and freak out. First responders got to show up and cool out. Right. Right. And they have to be ready for anything. And so they have their gear, they've been trained and they're ready to, to engage the scenario to help people because what's happening is, uh, and I don't know the numbers exactly, Patrick, but I, I think it's somewhere around 50% in regards to the number of expired withdrawals that relist within the next uh, 48 hours from, from, from coming off the market. Mm -hmm. And so there's still motivated people here. There's still a, a considerable amount of people that, okay, it didn't happen, but, but they still want it to happen. Yeah. And so they need a good conversation to figure out like which direction that they're going. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hey guys, I'd like to take a minute to make you a special offer regarding improving your seller lead generation and conversion. The sponsor of this episode is my good friends, landvoice.com. They reached out to me a couple months ago and let me know that they got a huge investment into improving their data, improving the uh, user experience and offering more seller lead generation options and I said, wow, congratulations. But the best news is, is they're offering it at the cheapest possible cost in the industry. I think this is such a great deal. And even my veterans, I think you should take a look at it, sign up, compare it against your existing services because you know we're talking about saving hundreds of dollars per month. For my newer agents or people who are new to prospecting, this is the best service at the best price you're gonna get. Now, my special offer is I put together all of my best expired scripts, trainings, videos, all of my best FISBO scripts, trainings, and videos, all my best around listings and sales scripts, training, and videos. And I also put together some of my absentee owner script training and videos. And I put together a little package together for you. So if you guys take advantage of my sponsorship link down below, sign up for landvoice.com, check out their data, check out the user experience. Once you do that, send me the welcome email to my email down below, patrick at coachpferry.com. And then once I get that welcome email, I'll automatically send you the most epic resource 
that resource is worth at least a couple thousand dollars in and of itself. So I want all of you guys winning this year with listings. We all need to get stronger and more efficient at generating listing opportunities and getting them to the market. I love what you said that the, the mindset that the agent has is that the person on the other end does not want to talk to us. And so they approach them with this kind of insecure, I'm sorry that I called you the apologetic <laughs> was a, was the mindset that I used to talk about. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, and what I think you said is come in with understanding that you're there to help and to serve. Mm, I, Your I think first a, responder is the empowered mindset versus the disempowered mindset. That's exactly what I'm saying, right? Let me capitalize on that a little bit because what happens yeah. is inexperienced people are people who don't really understand the scenario and they just try to plow in and, and like set appointments uh, are missing the the biggest opportunity to be able to maneuver through that resistance and rejection because I'm the salesperson, I'm the stranger, they're upset, right? To be able to move through that situation um, is to find out what's going on and like not be so, you know, we've heard this before, not have commission breath to like just set the appointment right. versus... I have a big thing in my office that says, uh, rule number one, get to know the people, mm, right? Nice. And getting to know the people is like, okay, all right, you're pissed off. You're upset. There's all these calls. You didn't sell. Okay, repeat, approve. It's going to be okay. Like, what's going on here? Did you get any offers? Yes. You know, what do you think was the was the problem? And when you're, when you're committed to the person, not the process. Right. Right. When you're committed to the person, then you can have a heartfelt, uh, sincere, authentic conversation with what the heck's going on here. Because what I've found, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but you know, a lot of the times those people who are the most upset are are sometimes the most motivated. Yeah, for sure. Because they wanted to sell. So justifiably they should be upset. And my commitment showing up with a solidarity in my identity right? Okay. I know what I'm walking into. It's an emergency situation. There's going to be some chaos. I know who I am. I know what value I bring. Now let me just chill these people out and find out what's going on because then that will lead me to the truth, which is I can help them. I can't help them. I don't want to help them sometimes and help us all move forward. Yeah. I love it. That's brilliant. Yeah. I used to say from one of the great books, uh, serve first, sell second. Mm -hmm. One of the mindsets that I see is they go in with the, I'm here to get a listing appointment versus what you're saying, which is you're here to go find out how you can help this family, find out what happened with the scenario. Yeah. Let's go to kind of second step for me in the framework, which you've alluded to, which is kind of understanding what's going on over there. And you, you talked a lot about the chaos of, I tried to sell and it didn't. What would you say that, you know, for uh, the new agents or even the veteran agents, what do they need to be understanding about the the person on the other end and the scenario that if they understood it, they would be more empowered? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll bring a <laughs> I'll bring a saying from another another world. Uh, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. Okay. Hurt people, hurt people. So when those expireds are lashing out and they're saying names and calling you names that, you know, you wouldn't repeat, right. uh, you know, in an yes. appointment and, and they're just like, they're just coming at you, man. Mm -hmm. Remember hurt people, hurt people. I'll tell you this, this I'm a high D personality, right? right? Which I want to comment on that too, personality types um, in a second. For me, being reminded of that was a big shift in my mindset when that flesh and emotion flares up because energy is real, right? Yeah. Energy is contagious. And they're like lashing out. And then all of a sudden, like my flesh starts getting sucked into that energy, right? Like to mm -hmm. right. breathe for a second yes. or do whatever yes. I need to do to create some awareness around the fact that, look, they're hurting, man. Okay. Yeah. And maybe if, even if it's not because of the transaction, they're just a hurt person and they've had bad experiences in life and, and whatever. And so, so now you're experiencing somebody who has this negative mindset and I can have the emotional intel intelligence to sit above the conversation. I can use the skills and we can talk about that really to figure out what's going on here because I either can help them, I can't help them, or I don't want to help them. But I can't, I can't initially accept this reflexive rejection that I, I initially get because I'm the salesperson, uh, I'm the stranger. Like I can't just accept that uh, I'm going to allow somebody to immediately um, resist me or, and reject me. Like I, I'm more of a professional than that. Uh, my future is in my hands to be able to help people. And sometimes 
helping people means going beyond that initial um, uh, interaction because people just sometimes are going to act that way because they don't know any better. Yeah. And I, I do have to know better. Yes, as, as, exactly. I was having so many flashbacks as I was listening to you. Flashbacks of you and I in the prospecting school. And I used to remember, you used to get very frustrated at times with, with the prospecting sessions. And so, you know, listening to you say what you said is brilliant, right? And then I also remember very distinctly, there was a, a young man in calling back into LA to an expired. He he hangs up the phone and looks at me and says, she is a beep. Yeah. And I had to stop him and say, absolutely not. Yeah. No, she's not that. Mm -hmm. What happened was, is she's upset and frustrated mm -hmm. and you and I are here to serve her mm -hmm. and we need to have more compassion and empathy for her mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. So just as you says, we have to rise up as professionals and see the scenario just like, and I love your firefighter analogy, really like yeah. it's chaos there. The firefighter can't be triggered by the response of the people in the, in right, the right. Department. They need to come in there, assess the situation, be cool, calm. People can be freaking out in their face. Be right. saying whatever they need to say in their face, and they just got to see through the whole thing and go get to the root cause and try and solve the problem. Yeah, imagine so. a, a a firefighter, a police officer showing up, and you know, I'm sure they're in plenty of scenarios where people are yelling at them, screaming mm -hmm. obscenities at them, right. and like it, they, you have to completely detach yourself because it's not about you. Exactly. Like it's just not. So I have to do something to be able to raise my awareness, my emotional intelligence, because um, people say, I want to help people. And then agents start going, well, and, uh, <laughs> not, not that person, and not in that situation. Exactly. Let me ask a different question on the same topic, because I, I think I did a training session one time, so I about the five real reasons why a home doesn't sell. Everybody says, oh, it was overpriced. And overpriced is, I think, a, is a symptom, not the cause. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear from you. What mm -hmm. do you think are the main reasons why properties don't sell in today's market that we could focus on as a conversational solution? Mm -hmm. You know, I was just looking at a listing this morning and um, it was a listing who called me back and said, uh, we, we offered to buy our house and we didn't buy it. And then she goes, I listed with somebody else. And then she, and then I went back and looked at the property and the pictures, there was only 12 pictures pictures of a, a messy bed and weird angles and weird lighting and 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 some of that stuff you know that's legitimate reasons why people would uh not get as many showings as they should get uh, on a listing but I, I for me i think when you're talking about this is whatever the um the side effect may be and a price is a side effect too is that yes. is that we're coming back to my ability to be um a powerful communicator you know understanding personality types i think that's a big deal i wanted to touch on that prior which is a big part of maneuvering through that initial conversation is understanding personality types and disc is the easiest one to just kind of conceptualize that we're always working on with my team is the power of communication and the power of the conversation, setting expectations, bringing clarity in regards to what it really takes to sell the home. Because I've listed properties close to and at previous list price prices, but the property's not sell because the seller wasn't explained to the importance of availability for showing or pictures. There's lots of different factors that can come into play in the conversation that I need to be prepared to uh, speak intelligently on and have high awareness with. I always tell when coaching for the listing presentation is you got to be able to crush these, these comps. Like you don't have yes. to have been in the neighborhood, but you got to freaking crush those comps yes. and, and be able to speak strategically good questions, right? On like, maybe it stays on market. Maybe it's features and benefits. Maybe it's location, like whatever it is to be able to communicate at a higher level. Because I think there's a, an epidemic in, um, in real estate where the level and the power, the quality of communication are in our industry is very, very low. And so when, when, you know, when a killer comes in like me, man, I, you know, it doesn't really take much. I just got to open my mouth and start talking and they go, um, this guy knows what he's talking about and, uh, and we'll follow his direction, which yeah. is price pictures, availability, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And then that ends up taking care of a lot of problems up front. Can I roll back one second? Um, and this, I experienced this member when I, you know, kind of leaving the world that you and I've met in. And then I came to California or came back to California, came to San Diego, and I started going on listing appointments. And when I was responsible for doing the comps, 
I was left very directionless as an as an agent. And I've, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time. And so I got caught many times on many listing appointments with a lack of confidence mm. in my understanding of pricing and value. Yeah. And then when I showed up, if I got asked questions that I got caught not knowing, hey, yeah. you know, my neighbor who sold their house one year, one day ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they know that. <laughs> right. And I only pulled one year in the neighborhood. So one day I missed that comp. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I was left in an uncomfortable, mm -hmm. disempowered position. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you on that. Like, you know, it's one thing to have my scripts and skills down. And then it's another thing to have like real confidence mm. in your understanding of yep. the market and value for that property type. Yeah. Is there any comment that you have in terms of advice to some of the agents out there on how they should be approaching, you know, kind of their comp research to gain more confidence? Yeah, to gain more confidence. I, I, let me just take a real quick um, note to what you said before, though, on the one day, one year, one day is that you know, um, cause I could, I could, I can vibe the analytics already watching this and going, I'm never going to know all the information. Yeah. True. You're never going to know all the information, like there's right. no way to get everything first of all. Okay. Correct. So, but I do believe that, that, um, your confidence in the information that you have and, and your confidence in, in your, um, in your overall ability to direct and lead them mm -hmm. is uh, significant to be able to overcome things that you couldn't see or, or, or were unexpected in the conversation. That's, that's Great. so working on your confidence and, and that's obviously role play. And uh, we'll, we're going to talk about that, but um, you were talking well, just to about touch on that though. I think, you know, see for me as, as a high analytical, after I spent a certain amount of time and really did a better job in the way that I viewed, like, so I'd go, you know, I'd go wide, I'd look at the price per square foot for the, for the, you know, city or county or neighborhood. Then I would go in and look at the specific neighborhood and go back in the history. I'd go on to Zillow to see if there's anything that I was missing. You know, I'd kind of just put more effort into a better understanding. And then as I got deeper, I'd see different, you know, I'd like, okay, this, this lot size in this neighborhood, is there anything else in the other counties that this lot size or this property type, this type of community does it compete with? This is stuff that no one ever told me about. Mm. And then as, you know, again, as a high analytical, you know, I needed all that information to just have so much more confidence so I could deal with those variables. Yeah. And so I just, you know, just throwing that out there that it's like, this is where somewhere where I started to get really hung up. And I, and then once I overcame that, you know, then that confidence that I had, I just walk in, oh, that, oh yeah, I, I didn't ever knew about that, but that makes perfect sense in relationship yeah. to everything that I know and there. Mm. And yeah, I'll add that in, but I'll tell you, this is where we're at and this is how this is going to go. Your ability to and, redirect your and, yeah. and move on and move well, on. Yeah. I yeah. think your point of having enough confidence to deal with that variable in yeah. what you did. Right. Not yeah. only in my scripting and my skills and my strategy, but also in my research. If you guys haven't watched, Paul and I have done multiple sessions on my channel and Paul has an amazing you know, uh, channel himself. And he does tons of scripting and skills like, man, he's like a master of the scripts and skills. Oh, thank you, man. So let's talk. Paul, for just a couple of minutes, because they, you know, they can go get so much more resource on your channel and, and scripts and skills everywhere. So let's just maybe touch a couple things and, you know, and then we'll move into some other interesting areas where I think most people aren't talking about. What are some of the best scripts and skills you're playing with today with regarding the expired cancels? I've been calling expired since 2008. Right. Um, and I've been in multiple coaching programs. And what I learned was that for the script that I'm using, and in, in, uh, so I have a, I wrote a playbook. It's called the playbook, and um, and the playbook basically is a compilation of all of this coaching and training that I've got, packaged together and battle tested, because um, you know there's a lot of people writing. Uh, scripts out there and writing content and it, it's theory and it's philosophical, but it's not really that in the awesome. trenches stuff. And so what I, what I learned like for an expired is for me, what really, really worked well. And because I do believe there should be a template and a, uh, and a strategy as far as how you create and carry and then close the conversation, mm -hmm. uh, because every conversation goes through that, right? Create, carry, close. But for me, for the expireds to help chill them out initially 
is to uh, is to initially go into situation deeper, right? Did you get any offers? Um, uh, while, while all the properties were selling, you know, what what do you really think stopped yours? You know, what do you feel should have been done to get the property sold? Uh, and so they'll talk about those things, right? Did yes. you get any offers? They'll, I mean, that's a reflexive response. Like they're just going to respond to that. Yes. And then there's, there's all these questions off of the questions in situational questions like, well, well, what happened? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and what do you, you know, wh where are you at kind of right now before we get into the motivational questions, which is, is moving towards the future. And so I think that strategy, uh, in the script, it works tremendous for me and for the people that I've coached. And, and, and that's really the core of where we're at with, with these questions. I could not agree with that strategy more going into the, the, what happened? Did you get any offers? Tell me yeah. about, you know, kind of what went wrong. What did your agent say? Those yeah. really digging there before you go into motivation, where they're going, what, you know, what the new plan is. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite questions from you. Right. So I actually agree with 1000%. Is your playbook available to people to either get or buy, um, is that, is that something that, you know, my clients and friends can get access to? Yeah, absolutely. You can email me, uh, uh, the real sales talk at gmail.com. And okay. uh, I'll, I'll put that down, in, yeah, down in the description yep. guys. And, and you can get, and ask Paul for the, the playbook and obviously check out his channel for more of these scripts and skills and whatnot. Yep. Real sales talk for YouTube, real sales talk on YouTube. Yep. Let's, let's jump into, in terms of, um, in terms of your clothes, I talk a lot about the your unique value proposition to the lead type, right? So my clothes to a kind of a neighbor of a of a listing, they're considering selling their home maybe in the next six months to a year. That clothes would be very different than the clothes maybe to the expired who I mm -hmm. actually discovered the problem, discovered what their motivation was, and I was going to close on them. Very different than let's say a referral from a friend who says, Hey, my friend is thinking about selling kind of what yeah. I'm going to say there might be a little bit unique. So yeah. is there anything that you're kind of playing around with today with kind of yeah. a unique close for the expired listing specifically? Yeah, I am funny enough that um, we didn't really talk about this, but I am. Um, and it's uh, it has changed the game, honestly, for me on perception uh, we call a lot of investors too, and, and certainly it's changed the game working with investors, but it also has changed the game working with expired with, withdrawals, which is um, I'm the buyer. I'm the buyer. So, so, uh, so what happens is the initial part of the conversation is, Hey, look, I was calling to see um, uh, if you'd still consider an offer, like just flat like that. Just would you, would you still consider an offer? Yeah. And half the time they're going, well, yeah, I, I kind of would. And, uh, and then I'm going to identify myself as a realtor, right? Well, look, I am a realtor, but I want you to know I am a buyer, right? And, and we work with buyers who are willing to buy off market without commissions. And, uh, and as a broker, obviously I can talk with you about listing the property. So I want you to know that I'm coming to this conversation with options because I, I really don't know where you're at and, and what we might be able to do. So, and then I move right might right into situation and motivation. Cause here's the thing, yeah. even if you think you don't have the capacity to be a buyer, like Paul, well, I don't have, I can't buy that property. Well, look, if it was a good enough deal, do you think you could find somebody who would JV the deal with you? Yes. Right. Or, or who would buy it. And then you could just, you could bring that buyer off market because um, in these uh, uncertain times and I'm prospecting more expired and withdrawns now actually, and um, for sell by owners than I have been in the last couple of years is that um, there could be opportunities for uh, creative financing or, or to, or to like maybe do a, a subject too, right. Where you're like, man, this is a great deal. I can just take this over because there's an issue or they're going to go to foreclosure. Now, obviously those are a, a smaller percentage of what's going on, but, but the point is, is that what kind of flexibility can I bring to the conversation versus just like, when are you interviewing the right agent for the job? Like, okay, fine. Right. Yes. Yeah. But there's a lot more to, if I can bring more to the conversation versus on just saying, Hey, I want to interview for the job, which I would like to do. Right. But, but I can bring other options on, well, Hey, look, I, when you, the verbiage, Hey, I'm the buyer, the Patrick man changes the game, man, <laughs> because then they go, Oh, okay. And then immediately, yeah. I mean like split second, they're like, Oh, okay. Well, and then bang, you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great level shift. Yeah. I, but I love what you're saying too, because as I was reflecting on this, there are a certain percentage of the expired cancels that are properties that have actual issues and actually prospecting as an investor mm -hmm. is legitimate, right? Like 
hey, are you still, you know, open to offers? And, you know, because not all properties were like this perfect property on the shining hill and it was just way overpriced. That is right. a percentage of the game, but mm -hmm. there's a whole another slew of opportunities inside there. So, yeah, I, I yeah. love what you're saying that. I think that's really interesting. It, I'm you know, telling you, man, like immediate, immediate shift. Yeah. 100%. And you gotta, you gotta be able to like, uh, um, capture that right. And have, and have the confidence in how you're delivering that. Because again, if you don't think you're a buyer, well, you probably could be in a certain scenario and you gotta bring something else to the table on options. And that works really well. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I want to, my next question, one of the, in, in the, uh, framework to master any lead type, I've always learned that you have to be a part of either a community or a training system if you're really committed to that lead type, right? So whether or not it's expired or FISBO or, you know, Zillow or pay-per-click leads or open houses or geographic farming, I don't care what it is. Yeah. But to just go it alone, maybe get, you know, get a little scripting advice, get a little bit of this, get a little bit of that. To go it alone, I think is an absolute train wreck and disaster. Yeah. So, you know, what have you learned over the years about being a part of a, a community and or ways to accelerate your skill development. Yeah. Yeah. I think um a hundred percent, right? Because if um it, it could be a train wreck initially if you're uh, not experienced and you're just like you're new to the game and then you come in and you're just bashing your head up against the wall for weeks and then you want to like jump off a bridge because you're like you feel so demoralized from the 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 verbal beating that you've taken right yes. or uh, or what's could be equally as bad is maybe you have a little bit more skill set and then you're like no nah, I got this and then you just, you, you know, you're doing okay or you're doing good, right? But you've actually missed out on a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars worth of commissions because your big fat head is like, oh, I'm good. I could talk to people, I could wing it. And so uh <laughs> yes. so it's a real thing, right? So yeah. so the community and um the training really is like any top performer. And I think athletics is the easiest way to be able to correlate that. On look, man. I mean, if you're a top pro as a golfer, like you need somebody watching you and watching your hips and watching your legs and watching your your arms, and uh, and all these pros who get paid millions and millions of dollars, you know, have these people that are watching them, communicating with them. They're in relationship with these people to fine tune because look, we're inherently lazy. Like we, everybody wants the path to least resistance. If I had the little button and you could push it and it got you listings, I'd be a trillionaire, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody wants the path of least resistance. And so knowing who I am inherently as a human being uh, helps me to the uh, realization that, look, man, I can't do this alone. And uh, being in community um, helps me with awareness. It helps me with perspective on different ways to engage conversations. You know, I, I didn't just until the last year was I uh, um, did I get in relationship with a partner in business, and he's like, "Hey, man, you're the buyer," and I'm like, "I'm the buyer," and he he was listening to me prospect, and I got a lot of experience prospecting expires, and he goes, and I got off the phone, he goes, "You're the buyer," like say it, say it, say I'm the buyer, and. And then I was like, and begrudgingly and a little bit uncomfortably, I'm like, eh. and then I started doing it. And then all of a sudden, man, boom, like the conversation started changing. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm the buyer. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yep. Exactly. So I think there's true power in humbling yourself. And my office, I have a huge painting and it says humble hustle. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just a reminder, man, to keep humbling myself to uh, being the student. Mm -hmm. Right. And figuring out like, where's my next relationship? Where's my next relationship? Like, who can I be resourcing to learn or be trained from? Because uh, I don't remember, I'm certainly in, in circles that we've been in. Is that the saying, you're one conversation? Hey guys, I'd like to take a minute to make you a special offer regarding improving your seller lead generation and conversion. The sponsor of this episode is my good friends, landvoice.com. They reached out to me a couple months ago and let me know that they got a huge investment into improving their data, improving the uh, user experience and offering more seller lead generation options. And I said, wow, congratulations. 
But the best news is, is they're offering it at the cheapest possible cost in the industry. I think this is such a great deal. And even my veterans, I think you should take a look at it, sign up, compare it against your existing services because you know we're talking about saving hundreds of dollars per month. For my newer agents or people who are new to prospecting, this is the best service at the best price you're gonna get. Now, my special offer is I put together all of my best expired scripts, trainings, videos, all of my best FISBO scripts, trainings, and videos, all my best around listings and sales scripts, training, and videos. And I also put together some of my absentee owner script training and videos. And I put together a little package together for you. So if you guys take advantage of my sponsorship link down below, sign up for landvoice.com, check out their data, check out the user experience. Once you do that, send me the welcome email to my email down below, patrick at coachpferry.com. And then once I get that welcome email, I'll automatically send you the most epic resource. That resource is worth at least a couple thousand dollars in and of itself. So I want all of you guys winning this year with listings. We all need to get stronger and more efficient at generating listing opportunities and getting them to the market. Away from your whole life changing. Yeah. And so, and so how, and then, and then how humble am I to that, to be able to put myself in, and be prepared for that and be humble enough in every interaction that I possibly can to be able to learn or receive something. Yeah. Love it. That's great. Yeah. Let me, let me jump over two more things on this on, is platforms, software tools. I believe that if you're committed to a lead type, you want to have the best tools, resources, and software. You want to be a part of the best training and coaching You know, for that specific thing. You want the best mentors. You want to be on the best mastermind, period, if you're really yeah. committed, right? So the the landscape of tools and, re, and, and services for the expired cancels, the landscape has expanded. It's shifted. Where are you at today in terms of your general recommendations for agents out there regarding expired cancels, tools, resources, and uh, software? The extent of the quality of the resources has has changed dramatically Big time. Um, since uh, I started using software in 2008. For the data itself, I think uh, Red X and, and uh, Vulcan 7 are, are two of the better um, pieces of uh, software to use for data. I actually have, have done quite a bit of resourcing on, on pitting software up against each other and figuring it out. Mm -hmm. I personally use Red X after having had Vulcan 7 for, for a little while. Mm -hmm. I, I actually found, I like Vulcan 7. I do. I like it. I think it's a good product. Mm -hmm. um, but it almost actually gave me too much data. I didn't need all that data. Um, I think that's a big problem too. I saw that, you know, that trend. Like I didn't need five numbers for one. Adder. Right. Right. It actually slowed the things down and kind of made me a little bit more mentally uh, fatigued with the process. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For sure. I, I, I absolutely experienced the same thing. And so I went back, I was paying for all of the premium services and, and you know, and, and what I ended up doing was scaling back to the basic service because that was enough. Like yeah. it, it, it got the job done and it prevented me from just sitting there for a yeah. long period of time going through bad data, even yeah. with a triple dialer, because I use, I do use Mojo, right. you know, and, and Mojo has come a long way with um, being able to utilize inlaid icons of like uh, Zillow and uh, Google maps. And those are huge little tools within the dialer, uh, you know, script built in worksheets yep. where on your profile, you're able to use, uh, we, we have our buyer and our seller pre-qualifications built into Mojo so right. that we can just pop right over and start pre-qualifying them right while we're on the call. Yeah. So, yeah. I loved that feature of being able to look at the map, going quickly to Zillow. Huge. And then just right while I'm live in conversation with an expired, I think I thought I always thought that was brilliant. That was yeah. And for guys, for context too, you know, Paul and I were, you know, on Mojo and yeah, 2008, 9, 10. So, you know, it's been, yeah. you know, 20 now 13 years or so. Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else in terms of tool tech software that you guys are using or that you recommend today? Something interesting or, or. Yeah. I, I, there's one thing that we're playing around with right now that we may be, I'm playing around with AI and texting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So AI's right. It's the new, it's the new big thing. that's going to, whether we like it or not going to find more and more ways to integrate itself. We're seeing it on social media in ways. Maybe some people don't even realize they're seeing AI Yep. And um, I think, well, we've seen some pretty cool stuff with um, companies out there that are creating an AI, uh, an AI integrated text bot yeah. and uh, they're pretty good. 
Um, and, uh, there's, a, there's, you know, it's not perfect and there can be some chunkiness to it. Um, but I think, um, texting for sure, because I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure I might not just do a VA who has my text script and, uh, is able to be a little bit more, uh, uh, there's less, uh, there's less room for error with, uh, with a VA than the, the cause sometimes that AI bot, like it, it feels a little chunky and you're like, and then other times you're like, holy shit, that's an amazing conversation yeah, exactly. from AI. You see people arguing with the AI bot and you're like, they have no idea. Right. Yeah. Sometimes they do. But, but um, I think, um, AI, you know, those AI bot texting services are very, very interesting. Cause what, what we found to be a, a very a responsive method with the, uh, with texting was um, ringless voicemail. Um, and then text. So we ringless voicemail. They call back. As soon as they call back, bang, they get a text. And uh, it's been an AI text bot. And we've been getting, you know, seven to 10 leads a day on that with people that are responding. Hey, I, I'm uh, I'll still consider to sell my home. Now it's still, you're still playing the numbers game with those leads, right? It's not like those are all, you know, uh, come list me leads. But um, I think texting too is, I think if somebody is um, interested in in uh, reaching out to uh, expired withdrawals, I think you need to find an effective way to um, be able to text them too. Because we get a lot of responses, set appointments and take listings from texting. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's a super interesting play. I, have, I haven't solved that riddle with anyone yet, but, you know, to keep experimenting with it. What I've said in my text message uh, YouTube video, which for some reason has been very wildly successful, but what I said in there was a text message is an invitation to a conversation, right? The text, you're not going to convert the listing in the text. What mm. the text message does is it saves you and them time to field the person that's ready to engage. And yeah. so it's almost like an ISA. Right. Mm -hmm. Where an ISA is like, I'm going to go through 200, you know, phone numbers to try and find the 10 people that are open to in a conversation about the topic. A text message can do the same thing and yeah. just provide that opportunity for us to engage with them from that response. Yeah. So just keeping that in context for a lot of the agents who are kind of thinking about text a little bit more panacea. It's not that it's, it's, a, it's just an opportunity to get someone to talk to, right? You still got to get them on the phone, right? Yeah. You still got to get on the phone and you got to yeah. set the appointment, but it yeah. is a good tool. Let's yeah. jump into the last topic, which I think is really understanding the numbers. <clears throat> Classic example. And I'd love to hear your feedback, but just the simple example and is, you know, someone would get on the phone and call expired, you know, at, at the prospecting school with myself or with you. And then, and within about 20 minutes, they would say, this stuff doesn't work. Right? Yeah. Or within 30 minutes, this stuff doesn't work. And then I'd walk over and I'd say, well, how many people did you call? And they'd go, well, I called a lot of people. And I'm like, well, how many? And then they'd be like, well, it's this many, you know, whatever, 20. And I'm like, how many conversations? I had no conversations. No, no, no. How many conversations did you have? Well, I talked to two people that that, um, you know, this was the wrong number. Yep, couple wrong numbers, that makes sense. You know, did you have any conversations with an actual owner of the property? Well, actually I did talk to one. Well, what happened there? Well, they actually said that, that I can have a call them back a little bit later. Oh, so you're actually exactly on track right now. You know, 20 calls <laughs> within 30 minutes, you know, two wrong numbers, you know, yeah. one person, you know, was angry and then one person actually was open to a conversation and asked you to call back later. This is exactly on track because right. I understood the the numbers of the lead type and most agents, they're, they're so clueless when it comes to the understanding of how it works yeah. that they can fail. They can think that they're failing, but they're actually winning and they just don't yeah. really know it. So yeah. I would love to hear, you know, just as your, your final thoughts on your <laughs> understanding of, you know, the numbers of expired cancels from either from call to appointment to con conversion, anything in there that would be useful for these yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, so they, they could be on the track to winning, but they don't know it, or they could be losing so slowly. They don't, they don't, they don't realize it. Yes. Right. So, so, and that's just a tie in before we talk numbers into um, being in community, being in training, like things change, there's different perspectives there's different experiences. And like, if I don't know the game or I don't, I'm not in touch with different ways people are playing the game, then I'm out of the game. Right. Or I'm losing. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. You're I losing. need to be in community, right? So 
Um, you know, I did, I did uh, for a period of three years when things got horrific in Vegas in eight, nine, 10, 11, we were just really ugly years. I was just tracking everything. And I, and I learned that right through, you know, working with your dad and, and, um, and, and began to appreciate that because I, over those years, I tracked numbers and then I, and then I came, I read the book, uh, inside sales Pr predictability. Um, and there was a study in that book, uh, along the line of like how many con how many calls, how many contacts to an appointment, and uh, and their data was right in alignment with the data that I took over a period of three years, which is was exciting. So look, when you when you're when you're basically cold calling, you know, because we do a lot of cold calling towards uh, absentee homeowners. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a gold mine for for me, but I've had to understand the game on. Well, look, uh, it came out to you know 200 calls to an appointment, 60 contacts to get an appointment for for those types of leads. Mm -hmm. uh, for expired withdrawals, it got down into the mid 20s. Is how I, that's as about as good as I got. Somebody could probably do better, but uh, you know if you talk to 20 or 30 people and you have the right skill set, you have the opportunity to set an appointment. Obviously, because with circle prospecting and uh, people who are haven't been clearly identified as motivated to sell their home, absentee homeowners, they're in the game, but they haven't raised their hand and said they want to sell like an expired or, or withdrawn, then you know, you're know you probably looking at 50 to 60 contacts to an appointment. If you're working on your skill set, because yeah, I've exactly. seen plenty of people who don't give, you know, they don't give any respect to the game and understanding that we make money by what we say. Right. How often do we say it? Like we make money by what we say. Uh, uh, how often do we say it? And the the quality of of what we say. Yes. And so everybody wants to do more with less, right? If I say like, if you only had to make fifty calls versus one hundred and fifty calls, yes, sign me up, everybody, right? But that means the work on if if I get paid by my mouth and what I say, then I'm going to have to be intentional about uh, the training, the role play, the community and what people are doing, doing with it. So instead of 150 to 200, which I've seen new agents do, right? 150 contacts, 200 contacts to get to an appointment. And then they screw it up because they don't even know how to set, you know, how to pre-qualify them and, and present. Then it's all, then, you know, then you're, you have an, you have an expiration date, right? You're going to expire <laughs> and you're going to be out of the business, right? So, yes, so when I'm in community, I'm in co coaching and I'm in training, then, then I can get that number down to, to uh, 75 and then down to 60 and then down to 50. And same thing for expired listings. Like when you first call a expi uh, 100 expires and you're just new to the business, it might take you 75 to 100 calls to get that. Now, does that mean that there, there wasn't business in there? No. Uh, in in uh, reference to uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, like it's not the leads. Yes, it's exactly. It's not the leads, it's man. It's, it's leads. me and my ability and my care and my skill set to be able to uh, to connect with people. And that's through the power of communication, man. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I had a, and we'll wrap with this. I had a, one of my great, uh, I have a very good expired prospecting uh, coaching clients right now. He you know does like 40 expired cancels in a year. And I asked him to go back over the last two years and tell me what percentage of the expireds listed with him within seven days of the expired versus seven plus to 90 days from the expired versus 90 plus. Okay. And it was great because when he really looked at it, it was like, wow, it was like on average between the two years, it was like roughly about 25 to 30% actually listed within the seven days. And then another, you know, uh, 25 to 30% or so, whatever it was the year was within the seven to 90 and then 90 plus. Mm -hmm. And so just an understanding of that really helps us to be able to go, okay, cool. Like, you know, how many agents do you and I know that like have a huge amount of expireds that they've talked to, had a good conversation with, but they only convert the ones within the first seven days and they right. leave the seven to 90, they forget about them or the yeah. 90 plus. It's like mm -hmm. they're leaving, you know, half of the business on the table because they're not even aware of how this kind of math plays out. Is and, there any last and, comments in that relationship? Well, a, and a hundred percent agreed. Um, and then there's a little sliver of um, of um, of re, of uh, of important of importance there, which is um, like um, the scripts uh, vet out situation and motivation. So that really is not just to get to the appointment, but like like what's going on, 
Like right. what's re like what is the quality of this lead really? How motivated are? Which is the number one thing that I need because without motivation right now you're dead, right? Yeah. Yeah. So because most agents don't even know the motivation, right? Let's say, well they want to move to Florida. Okay, well that's where they're going. Like why is that important? Well, yeah. cuz their mom lives there. Okay, well what's the benefit of that? <laughs> they don't know. They don't yeah. know. So so the um the ability to to go deeper in the conversations with the I call them pitch scripts, right? The initial script that I start with. And then and then we move on to the pre-qualification script which helps me dig even deeper right. because I could be using that pre-qualification script uh, on the initial call uh, through the follow-up to like understand like what is the quality cuz I could be following up uh, you know this comes from your world right in the world that I lived in with you for a little while is that you know the bad leads hide the good ones sometimes if I'm if if I'm not diligent about really digging in and identifying and and when I Patrick when I focus on and I'll end it here when I focus on getting to know the people mm -hmm. I, yes, the process is important. Yes, the process gives me structure and discipline and allows me to extract all the important information. But like, I got to prioritize these people on really getting to know them. And then and I have structure, I have discipline and process. Dude, it's like magic. And then, then my efficiency levels go through the roof and then everybody gets what they want. Yep, that's right. And you feel good in the process. And you feel good in the you're process. Connecting with people. Like you're connecting with people. You're in relationship with community. You're serving. You're not just trying to call to get a listing so you can get paid. You know, right. Right. 100%. I really, I do. I really do want to help people. And as an emergency responder, I can help anybody. I can That's help right. anybody. Paul, you're the man. I'll, everybody go down and in the description box will be all the details to get connect with Paul, follow him on his YouTube channel, his Facebook, and to get those scripts from you. Awesome, man. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much. Awesome, man. Thank and you. I do need to fucking get going. <laughs> Later.